in quantum mechanics for every measurable quantity there is an operator for example there is the position operator momentum operator or most important is uh, energy operator which is also called hamiltonian or angular momentum but before understanding those uh, you have to start your understanding with the uh, with this lesson that for every measurable quantity or every physical quantity you have a wave function and uh, if you have to describe the changes of wave functions you don't need equations the separate equation for uh, each and every wave function because if they are all wave functions are these are wave functions are related to a one state vector and if you write an equation for change of that state vector all its wave functions uh, are changed this change is, is described by it and uh, who does that change of state vector the answer is that operator you know so that for every so that means that on the all in all the lesson is that for every physical quantity there is an operator and that operator changes state and state means changes all wave functions so that is there and uh, if, if so far you are thinking that operator uh, means only differential operator then and this looks very unfamiliar very abstract to you then you have to show some patience start this way logically this is a start this is a mathematics you do some mathematics and that is the topic of this 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 lecture particular lecture and uh, what you have been thinking so far about the word operator for example derivative is an operator that will be its special case of what is written above here and the name of the special case is a representation that's a is a representations are numbers or, or collections of numbers which describe all these changes i have talked about that and derivative is a particular collection uh, is a particular matrix even so these kind of things uh, are to follow if you first learn this abstract mathematics where you don't see any familiar thing or with some patience you do it and you you see familiar things as a result not to start with so that's a bit of patience is required so the start what i mean is is the following that uh, what is the operator the answer is not physical quantity is not derivative these are all will uh, come as a result if you take a start which looks very abstract which is removed from your previous uh, previous understanding still with patience start with here and start with the following that a vector an operator sorry and i repeat now and uh, operator acts on a vector and gives a vector so any change from psi vector to psi phi vector is described by an operator that is just purely mathematical abstract but that is very general as well so results of that are to follow but before this i have uh, to check your understanding that if you have you, you understood what i have said and the check of your understanding is that i have uh, shown you four options a b c d and you have to recognize who is who this is, is that an operator think of that i don't give answer uh, answer to yourself uh, that means operator means a vector on cat and give operator on cat and give the cat if it operates on cat will it give give a new cat right or no think yourself what about that what about that where you have a cat and bra and what about that and uh, if you give you some i have given you some time to think and the answer is which of these a b c d is an operator the answer is c and the proof of the proof of saying that uh, c is an operator where, where a is a bra b is cat and d is bracket but bracket is not in not a general operator the general operator is c and the proof of that statement is that in place of a if you put that in place of a if you put that that operates on psi and this is the bracket is because the number and number multiply with the cat is a cat so that operates on a cat vector and give, give the cat vector so that's 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 an that's an operator 
So that was a that was just only a definition, nothing else, and it was a, some exercise in that. Now I start uh, making uses of that, and in those uses, the first uh, of the use of operator is that uh, operator changes state vector, and, and uh, the importance of state vector is that they are related to all wave functions. Now that mathematical that, that statement in English has uh, been written now in a mathematical language. And here, when I say all wave function, all means all all possible uh, substitute for a. When I say all means uh, position, momentum, energy, and so on. So so a a you can have x, which is the position, r three position, or a you can have momentum, which you may like to say k. And a, you have energy, and so on. So every wave function, every wave function has psi a. So a, as I'm saying, a could be x, p, k, or e, or whatever. So all wave functions are related with, with one wave vector. And and the changes I talk about later. But for the moment, I just tell you in this way. What is the use of saying that all wave functions are related to a state vector? And the use is the following: that if you know a wave function, you can relate to a state vector, and if you know state vector, you can relate to any other, and B is also any other wave function. So from wave function psi a old to psi b, any wave function, old wave function to any new wave function, that is done in two steps. So you can say two operations. But there is a theorem which is called completeness is equal to identity, and I tell you what the what the origin of the name that says that you can do. You don't need two steps. You don't need two operations. You can do that in one operation, and that operation uses a theorem, which I think is the most used theorem in in quantum mechanics, and that is that here the idea is the following: that in in the Two steps are can be replaced with one because in one step you use cat and cat is here, and in the other step you use bra. Bra is here. The theorem says that uh, you know you can see a proof. You can imagine a proof here that if if in place of b I choose a, then you are back to psi a. I mean overall no change. So no change is identity. So the cat and bra are same, and it's called the completeness because you have to identify after identifying cat and bra, you have to sum over them, and sum should be complete. If if your basis is ordinary, then um, you should have i unit vector, j unit vector, and k all the. You, you can't say say only i and j. So they have to be complete. Complete basis, and that's why the theorem is called completeness. And the theorem says the identity is equal to completeness, and that's the one operation which uh, replaces two operations. So I write operation later, but before writing operations, what is the operations? I do something else, and that is that what I spoke about as uh, an idea and thing. I get a formal mathematical proof of that. You know, I spoke about a, and here if you keep a as well, you are back to same state. Function, wave function are also called state function. But here, I when I giving a proof, I write in a more general language. You know, general word you should learn is this whole code. Whenever I say general, I will mean related to all wave function. So general is psi cat, not wave function. Wave function is limited. So I prove for generally, that means for any state vector, not necessarily wave function. When it operates on that, in place of a. i have this operator you know what hap what happens that a psi becomes uh, is a number which is here a psi is psi a i have written psi a and a is here and there is a summation now this is uh, if you if you are worried about how to do that think of that is already in there and if you are thinking these are different concepts that you should be mentally you now mature or you should learn that at least that uh, the summation and integration are same thing Inte integration is also a continuous sum so the the answer to that is written here only the thing is rather than integration with respect to a i have summation with respect to a the answer is psi cat so you say no what it operated on psi cat it did not change did not change is is identity is identity operator 
So now finishing that, I, I say what, what, what is that operation in the middle of this slide? So operation is the following. You know the, the idea was I repeated that operation replaces two steps into by one, and the step is the following: that if you, if you say A is old, then that is psi old, and psi old is uh, you can say psi old is like you, 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 that theorem psi old is uh, if you say old uh, psi old is is this old bracket with the uh, with psi. And uh, with the, in place of psi, you know, right rat, I have uh, interchanged left hand side and right hand side because I needed here. So here, that is psi is replaced here. Psi is replaced with left hand side, which is there. And in place of a, I have written new, and I have taken bra inside bracket c. And this is this is you know what it is. You see it here new replaced with b and it is psi b no it's a psi new so psi old old wave function is related to new wave function so that is the general result and if you you want to see an example of its use then i show you an example in the next slide in the next slide i i i we again shown you the the last equation of the previous slide for a, for a ease in comparison so that's nothing new and now you only specialize in case of old you write x in every position and in case of new write k which is also called momentum if h bar k or k both are called momentum in quantum mechanics now you just specialize it in place of a you old you replace x and in place of new you press k so you see what happens and another thing is when i show you its actual result for that I have to show that you know if new I have to replace with k k is continuous so that means the summation will be replaced with so mentally be ready before recognize and that is summation will be replaced with the summation with respect to k k is continuous will be replaced to what have you thought whatever you thought compare with what I have written summation back to new in uh, summation back to k continuous k is is shown as integration back to k okay. continuous summation is integration and the rest is uh, nothing new only thing is that in place of old have written x now have you seen this result anyway if not have you seen that result in mathematics that is called Fourier transform and i've been making use of that now, if you compare those equations, your comparison will tell you that this quantity is that thing over that which I've written here. So that's all you need uh, for uh, for this lecture. But this result is needed in the next lecture. This result is also needed, and at that time in the next lecture, may, I may not have that context, uh, the, this background. So I take some time to 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 some, to put some comments on that so that you remember that this this lesson to be used in next lecture where uh, I will not have this uh, related information. So I mean, again I tell you not needed for this lecture but needed for next lecture is that you, you I tell you how to remember this result and this result is that uh, I have written it here and to remember you, you may like comparing it with that result which is nothing new I mean the just last slide is not in the I've written here as well this result in place of old you write x so this becomes psi of x so this is many times written so there should be very familiar result which is from here in place of x today if you compare that you will say that uh, if that this says that psi is replaced with k if, if this is a general result and you are specializing to that so if psi x replaces kx, and what is the expression for kx is that. Now that result you have to remember. And normally books do not write kx. They write psi x and they expect you to understand that if when you say psi is equal to k, that means it's a wave function whose label, whose name is k. What I mean is whose uniqueness is, is k. So that means it's a wave function which whose special property is that it has same k. Same k means same wavelength. So it's a, it's a wave, plane wave which is same wavelength everywhere. So that you should, uh, in the next lecture when it appears, you should be mentally ready for it. That kx, even if it is written as psi x, but if in, this, 
in the in the context it is written that it's a, it's a wave function which is characterized by one fifth k then you should immediately write that expression which is, if i include omega t as well that become plane wave so you should know that wave function which is characterized or labeled by one k is is a plane wave so that's as i said next but next lecture for the present lecture you 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 you, you can forget that and continue from this what i have shown in the left block and continue in the next and uh, i continue by saying that uh, that uh, th th there is another completeness or you know the theorem which i said in my opinion is the most uh, used theorem in quantum mechanics i made a one use in the previous slide and uh, and i show three more uses and the first of three is that uh, in, in 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 any arbitrary bracket in between is i i is everywhere like number 1 is everywhere but completeness says that i the, the trivial i is uh, this mu may say non trivial completeness should not be anything new to you hopefully you take a inside now you know i b is a bracket i i mean showing this many times also no, previously, I have been showing in in place of b, I have been psi, but uh, be mentally flexible for it. If the b it was psi, uh, psi then the answer it was psi. But if it is a b, then in answer it is a b. It is a b survives. And independent variable was x, and x is replaced with i. i is discrete. For discrete, the independent variable is shown as subscript. And now come to that. Here, you know what is the difference between them? There, there, the cat bar are interchanged. So, so it's a bracket, and there's a the i appears as a bra here, and i appears as a cat. To bring i in a bra position, you have to interchange and interchange. I have shown you as a cat, a Hermitian conjugate dagger is bra, and bra dagger is uh, Hermitian conjugate is, is cat. Because the numbers so you don't need Hermitian conjugate because you don't need transpose part of it. It's just complex conjugate, and uh, so this means complex conjugate interchanges cat and bra, and after that it becomes i becomes bra, and like i here, just name a change so a becomes a i a i star. Star means complex conjugate. Now first thing is that this result should not be new to you because this is a uh, is an ordinary result which you know from uh, school level or. Uh, Early college level, that a dot b is a x b x plus a y y. If you think of that, that is this result is both results are same, just that summation is written explicitly as a through symbol. But there is one difference. Here is a more general result. In that here, in, in that your previous result actually you are dealing with only those vectors whose components were real so you did not need any complex conjugate but if uh, if you need complex conjugate then you have to write it and the, uh, the general result has complex conjugate about it and complex conjugate of you can't be careless about that only of what we took which is appear on the left namely which is on the bra and that's is it because of that result that bracket notation bracket notation say don't be careless about bra and cat you can't interchange you can't say just dot product of you have to say bracket bra means left is left right is left you have to pay attention to what is left what is right what is left you call bra and what is the significance of bra and what what, what is lost if you change bra with cat the answer is that only for a bra you have complex conjugate so the new care you have to do if you have not been caring now you have to remain careful now next i write the continuum version of that apparently it's just a continuum version but the name is that deliberately chosen to make uh, uh, some use in quantum mechanics for the moment you you can temporarily forget for one or two minutes quantum mechanics just think of that as a mathematics and apparently there is no hidden agenda although there is an agenda but that is to follow later but uh, for the moment you just to think of that uh, the letter b is replaced with the letter psi and a is uh, phi and uh, summation i is by x and summation over i is replaced with integration back to x and b i is b is replaced with psi and i with x and if it is a 
continuous variable then you don't write psi subscript x because if it is subscript x that in calculus that is called derivative so independent variable is shown as in parenthesis in in round bracket so nothing new and uh, it's a complex conjugate and the name is only changed so hopefully it, it, you think it's, it's nothing new result so so far we are doing just uh, mathematics replacement I, I was pretending as it were i'm doing just uh, mathematics but uh, and i continue still fun one line as it were i'm doing mathematics and in mathematics uh, the new thing you have learned uh, if if you have learned now is that uh, you can uh, have uh, dot product of functions you know if someone says that uh, make a dot product of log of x with exponential of x you may surprising you, if your mind is limited to that vectors are physical quantities having magnitude and direction you will say what is the dot what is the mutual angle of uh, a log and exponential but here is the answer you can calculate uh, dot product of functions you know what it is just log or exponential whatever it is multiply Uh, if it is the uh, this bra related to take complex conjugate uh, you and and you integrate and that is the dot product of function so that you mean your dot product is generalized that so anyway so far is the mathematics and now come to uh, the use of quantum mechanics and because of that you the name was chosen to be psi so far i have been showing as it was it was a arbitrary but it's not arbitrary name but it's not an arbitrary name it is deliberately chosen to give you a quantum mechanics result and that result is the following is that you know this is a, i have been telling you that this is a transition amplitude from state psi to state phi for example ground state wave from ground state state so i should not say wave function ground state to excited state for hydrogen atom and suppose you are reading a book which does not make any use of cut bra notation and there are books uh, which we which tell you only wave function and you may say that if you know wave function you cannot calculate transition amplitude don't be discouraged this tells the lecture tell you even if you know only wave function your book does not tell you wave vector still if you know wave function you just multiply wave function integrate that will also give you transition amplitude and you square it and you get probability even if you if you know only wave function so that's that's the usage of that anyway the all in all that's the first usage of completeness theorem and the second usage is that uh, if uh, in this you take a special case that that phi or psi are same you you know integral this becomes uh, psi psi is a psi so i don't uh, hopefully need to comment on or it is just replace uh, Letter to letter, phi with psi. But now, do you recognize what it is? This is a normalization. This is equal to one. And if this is equal to one, this is equal to one. And calculus says it's a dummy variable. You can replace x with k anything. So that means if it is one, this is one, and uh, if it is one, this is also one. And then you can have any dummy variable. You know what he said? any that means my result is now applicable to any and any means the general if you say any person that means if your rule is valid for any person your rule is general rule okay so if you now you have a rule that is equal to one that is valid for any wave function position wave function moment of wave function energy wave function or namely any so this is a very general result so normalization we have generalized it each the, the, the word each is generality and i have just written it it's a generalized like the, the, the like the wave function was generalized by wave vector so normalization is generalized by this so this is a general version of normalization you have to remember it so that's the second use is of completeness theorem and now the third use the third use is that uh, you have to replace uh, abstract quantities with numbers before you can make a scientific use of it so this look like a philosophical statement for it and i make uh, hopefully i make it easier for you and the easier is the following that what you should do is that uh, for example if you have a vector vector is not a measurable think of that if you have not that Me measurable are numbers so if you have ordinary vectors it's is related to ax ay az these are numbers these are measurables and now let the terminology the numbers are representation of that abstract quantity ax ay az are representation of a you call you have been calling that component the components are also representation and the the, the, the name of the the reason for name is 
that representation are like representation of something like a representative of a country it's it's a, it's a person who represent that ambassador you can see the ambassador who represents the country so you can see x a x a by a z you can see you can measure their numbers and uh, now anyway here you, you don't have ordinate vector you have a cat vector but still the same you have to replace them with number and numbers are bracket so it's only cat so number is bra you need bra as well so that's a simple you you you, you multiply you take bracket to, of both side with i this f i is um, as with i s i i mean this is uh, this equation i've shown you many times i think the lately it was uh, here it was maybe psi and it was maybe x or maybe b a i or or b i i've written it many times uh, it's just a letter that different and and you should now write uh, that you should be you should be memorizing that result if, if not, if not uh, also understanding as well that this is f this is si remember si is a number so s is converted to a number so to it is a representation now the next is the, you have to convert these two representation namely numbers as well and uh, you have to, to get to convert r you have to have a bra in place how to arrange bra so that uh, r is converted the answer is i give you one minute to think how to arrange bra here and the answer is into this identity a completeness here you know this is a bra here is nothing new if I, uh, this is a si then this is a rj rj so r is converted to a number in representation so meanwhile so you you thought job for a and you don't need to be spending time on it it is already there a is uh, converted to a number i a j this is a, a operating on cat is a cat and cat with bra is a bracket and bracket is a number and i have written the number in this form and the convenience of writing is in this form is that uh, if you know if you uh, if you, you can pause this and multiply the yourself any two cross two matrix with a column and you know what happens a11 you say a11 a1 you write here a11 a12 a21 a22 so a11 r1 you try to say member i one way say a11 r1 i is 1 j is 1 a 1 2 r 2 you should have uh, you know with your pen and paper that is a i j r j just to think next uh, hopefully you have a 2 1 r 1 you know that is that i just uh, i i is equal to 2 or j is equal to 1 and the last is a 2 2 r 2 uh, hopefully you have these four numbers in, 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 with your pen and paper if you have done that so that means it, it's a matrix multiply with column and now next one to this is already so important that you have to memorize it you, in this form it may be difficult to memorize is some entity but if you say it's a matrix it's a simple thing it's just you know what happens is cat is replaced with column and that's a simple to remember to remember the sound is same as well both are saying the cat is cat by by column and the this this here was a column column here and a operator is represented by these are elements of work they are elements of of a matrix so operator is represented by matrix cat is represented by column here and this uh, matrix multiply by column is a column and so this means this, cat, this is again cat cat is so, so so you have to remember cat is represented by a column and operator is represented by matrix and the result is to to be written uh, maybe at any time uh, With, uh, I, I will try to give you a warning. Otherwise, maybe without warning, appear. If cat uh, appears as a column, then bra appears as uh, bra is on the left, so it's uh, on the left is is a row. Now, if it is a, what will be the continuous case? And the continuous case, there are two ways of uh, learning. What is the continuous case? One is the mathematically advanced version, which is which is an option in the next slide, and that is that you have to. learn an argument that uh, in continuous case the continuous matrix is a derivative now that is a bit advanced if you if, if, if it's too, too much for you uh, first you an easier version easier version is just a discussion a discussion will generate a claim and the next lecture i plan to give a formal proof of that claim so that's how the whole plan is and discussion is that a wave function is a function 
what can operate on a function to give you another function? Here you know familiar answer to that. That's, and that is derivative. If it is a function, what and operates is a derivative. So that's just a discussion which at least suggests to you uh, and hopefully makes you mentally prepared to memorize. And the proof is the, in the next is in the next uh, slide. And the claim is the following: that in continuous wave vector is represented or replaced, you can say, by wave function, and the operator is replaced with derivative. So derivative is an operator in, in continuous case and an operator is represented by a derivative and the outline has said that uh, derivative will also appear as a special case and that is what I am saying. Now so far technically if you have, uh, if you are advanced enough, you know mathematics, you will say it is only a claim, it is not a proof. So the proof is optional. You don't need uh, proof uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the course to follow, you don't need only that result uh, and it's optional to you whether you like as an independent result or if you need one unified result with a proof then that is a bit advanced. For that you have to learn that this is, uh, you know, this result, this is nothing new, this is a definition of operator I started this lecture with and two, this is slide number nine, this is this two, two slides away, the previous two previous slide I, I wrote that as that, that is nothing new. So I better not spend time on it. I've written it many times in this. Uh, and now continuum, uh, for, for the moment I just change names. And in continuum what will happen is that uh, I think you can, I can promise you as a rule unless otherwise I speak that I is replaced with, uh, with X, J with Y and summation with integration and uh, column with, with wave function. That's a continuum. So, so result is, you know, the way of writing is something new. If AIJ, sub, if the matrix, ordinary matrix is a subscript, and if it is a, if it is a continuum, that is written as a function of x and y, in two independent variables. Now what, now is the, now is the mathematical proof matter, is what can be in place of that? You know, here, I give you a moment to think, and then I show you the result. You know, y is shifted to x, so what can shift? I'll give you a minute and then I think only a minute. Sorry, I don't have more time. I, I show the result. Who shift? Direct data shifts. First is that direct data which shifts y to x plus h. And the second direct data which shifts y to x. And this is the result. And you recognize that that is the derivative, which is which was a claim in the in the previous slide, and now it's mathematically proved. This is continuum matrix derivative is a continuum matrix. It's a bit abstract. Ordinary matrix, you know, I is a row index, and you say it's this this. You can count first to first, second, third, fourth. But in a continuous case, you have to just imagine it. If you, as you replace it continuously, your row is changed. As you, in, in continuous case, you get first column, second column, third column. It's a discrete, but continuous, you say it's a column is continuous. So if you are mentally flex, advanced enough to, to, to absorb that, then you can understand that derivative is also a matrix. And uh, the derivative is a continuous, matrix so derivative is a matrix and is a continuous representation of an operator so what i did in the previous slide for discrete if i do for continuous for operator representation is a matrix which in this case is a derivative and that's all and uh, I, I write the result that a derivative is a special case of an operator that i wrote in the previous as well the previous uh, slide was a claim and now is mathematical proof uh, it's nothing new and now I conclude and uh, what, I, what we have learned in this is that uh, this previous, lately we are not talking about that but in the, if you can recall the first half of this uh, lecture we were talking that that, um, that operator changes the state vector and when you change state vector all its related wave functions change. So what is the operator as a measurable quantity? As a physical quantity, measurable quantity, the measurable and the answer to that question is that uh, measurable quantities are numbers and numbers are collected in a matrix. Now there is a, so that means the operator is represented by a matrix. 
Now there are two versions of it. One is the easier version, but mathematically less advanced, and that is that you can you can memorize two different lessons. One is lesson is that in discrete case an operator is represented by a matrix, and in continuous case an operator is, is represented by a derivative. You can memorize as uh, two independent results, but you can also, if you understood the optional previous slide as well, you can uh, you can know that derivative is also a matrix. So that means that you don't need two different uh, lessons. You have one only one lesson, and that is the following: that operator is always represented by a matrix. Both are are, are matrices. In discrete case, the matrix is matrix ordinary matrix in continuous case the matrix is is derivative so operator is always represented by matrix that's one way that's advanced way if not then you can memorize as two independent result operator is and that is the less advanced way is that operator is represented either by matrix or by derivative now you choose unified result or separate results whatever it is i have to finish here and hopefully i see you in next lecture and what?